What's up guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Grosby and I'm here with the next episode discussion of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord, Season 1 of course. We'll be working through this and then we'll start it on Season 2. Now this video may contain spoilers so if you haven't seen the episode yet then be sure to go check it out before you watch this video. If you would take just a moment and hit that like button it would be much appreciated and if you are new please subscribe to the channel. Likewise, you can also help the channel out by becoming a member of the Patreon. There will be a link in the description down below. Episode 2 of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord pretty much picks up with the next morning after Diablo bests the Mages Association's number one bootlicker and Diablo finds himself surrounded by stereophonic worldly temptations. He's still unsure, however, if this is a video game or if this is a world that is just similar to Cross Reverie, but nevertheless decides that it will take some looking into. There is no doubt that Diablo is in way over his head with Shira and Rem, but I will say this. His suffering makes for some great entertainment and some very cultured viewing. Another thing I want to point out is the difference in Diablo's power level than everyone else's. In terms of the game, he's basically max level, but in the Isekai, most everyone has yet to hit those numbers. So, like the attack from the night before, he's more capable of taking on the challenge. It's also interesting that he's in a mostly demi-human area of the city, indicating that there is a disparity in the way humans may treat them. Though if I remember correctly, that isn't really touched on at length. If anyone has an issue with Diablo, it's mostly due to his manners and not as much because he's a demi-human or a human in disguise. I know it's a bit early for this in the video, but my favorite scene in this episode was when Diablo and Shira are registering at the Adventurers Guild and Diablo has to prick his finger for a blood seal on the document. And as his blusterous and loud alter ego slices his finger open and splats a fountain of blood all over the paper and a little bit on the face of the guild receptionist, it was absolutely hilarious. I have to say, straight up, perfection in comedy. This episode also explains that Shira is a runaway elf princess that is being pursued by her creepy-ass psycho deviant brother, who wants to force her to marry him and bear his child. He makes cringe want to cringe, and that's me being nice about it. After some squabbling with the elves, Diablo hands them all their booties on a platter, and that's just fine with me. Though I'm positive something needs to be done about this sniveling bootlicker, Gallic. Spoiler, he does get his, just not in the way I'm happy with. In the end, Shira tells the elves to tell her brother... <laughs> Did I get that right? Yeah. Tell the elves to tell her brother that she isn't coming home and that he needs to lose her number. But come on, we know good and well that he won't. So, yeah, we have to pound some fools. Overall, not a bad episode. It had some really great moments and I totally love the Shira Rim interaction the most. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. Go watch it for yourselves and then come back and let me know what you thought of episode two of How Not to Summon a Demon Lord is. And make with those comments. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. And if you are new, then make sure to subscribe for more videos. If you want to help support the channel, then you can do so by becoming a member of the Patreon and making a donation. You can pledge as little as a dollar. I'll get a coffee and then I'll get back to making those videos. Have an amazing day, everyone. Keep being awesome. And I will see you all in the next video.